Static Electricity, the iPhone, and Bob Saget are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is January 9th. It is obviously the ninth day of the year. You got 356 days left in 2023. It is the second Monday in the second week and the 20th day of winter. If today's your birthday, your birthstone is a garnet. Today is National Static Electricity Day. Didn't know it needed its own day. Myself, I hate static electricity. It may be a little shocking, but National Static Electricity Day is on January 9th. The observance explores static electricity and even how we may cause it. Static electricity is different from the other electrical currents carried by wires through a building or transmitted by electric companies. Static electricity is produced when the positive and the negative charges of any atom are out of balance. Everyone did static electricity experiments in high school and grade school and even kindergarten, I'm sure, you know, rubbing a balloon up against your head. It was neat back then when we were kids, do all kinds of static electricity stuff at school. Now I have three different cans of spray to get it out of my clothes so my t-shirts don't stick to my armpits. I forget what casino it was, but me and my friends were at a casino in Vegas one time and just every single thing we touched, we got shocked. It was horrible. It's been years, but I remember for a long time we didn't go back to that casino because because of the static electricity. All right, let's see what else January 9th has given us. 1857, the 7.9 magnitude Fort Tejon earthquake shakes central and southern California. Now, this one is pretty interesting. They obviously didn't have the technology to measure it at the time, but they estimate it was about 7.9, and a lot of people feel this was bigger than the one a few years later that famously shook San Francisco. Thing is, back then, there wasn't much around here. Even to this day, if you travel by Fort Tejon, there's hardly anything up there. It's almost the halfway point between Bakersfield and in Los Angeles and there's nothing up there. Tehachapi, that's kind of close, but nothing really exciting up in that area. So it didn't do a lot of damage, I'm sure, but it shook California pretty good. So if you're not from California or any place that gets earthquakes, you may not know this, but they're pretty scary. If you're from Southern California, like myself, they're kind of just normal. I mean, I've had friends that were from Texas, Iowa, things like that, that were just horrified at earthquakes. I mean, they couldn't even function. They were shaking so bad. And me and the guys from California were like, eh, happens. And I'm sure during a tornado or someone from Florida seeing a hurricane, they would, the same effect would be with us. We'd be horrified and they're all, eh, it's just a hurricane. So it's weird about Mother Nature. Different. If you grew up around it, you react different. It's like, well, we get snow here in Portland. Oh my God, people just lose their freaking mind. You could make a comedy show about people in Portland or Seattle reacting to snow and sell it as a comedy in Minnesota. I guess you could do the same thing for Southern California. I mean, every time it rains, you got every news outlet chasing down puddles throughout Southern California. 1861, the American Civil War, Star of the West incident occurs near Charleston, South Carolina. On January 9th, 1861, a Union merchant ship known as Star of the West is fired upon as it tries to deliver supplies to Fort Sumner in the Charleston Harbor. This was the first time shots were exchanged between the North and the South, and it still didn't trigger the Civil War. On December 20th, 1860, South Carolina has seceded from the Union, so they were no longer part of the United States. So South Carolina said, look, we're not part of the United States anymore. All those federal troops in Fort Sumner, they got a bail. They wanted to evict these guys. President Buchanan refused to comply with their demands, but was also careful not to make any provocative moves. Inside the fort, Major Robert Anderson and his 70 to 80 troops needed supplies. The Buchanan administration decided to dispatch a civilian ship, the Star of the West, instead of a military transport in order to keep tensions from flaring up. If tensions are high and all of a sudden you're pulling a military ship into Charleston Harbor, things are going to happen. So Star of the West left New York on January 5th, 1861. After it left, Major Anderson sent a dispatch to the Secretary of War, Joseph Holt, and told him that things were fine, they didn't really need supplies right now. Anderson also added that South Carolina was building gun emplacements overlooking the main shipping channel into Charleston Harbor. Holt realized that the ship would probably be in danger and tried to call it back. They couldn't get in contact with the Star of the West. On the morning of January 9th, Star of the West just kind of 
moseyed on into the Charleston Harbor near the fort, and a South Carolina battery of cannons on Morris Island let loose a couple rounds. These shots represented the opening salvo of the war. More shots were fired, and the ship suffered a minor hit. Anderson watched from Fort Sumner, but did not respond because he feared that this would actually start the war. The incident brought everyone to the negotiating table, and some hard language was exchanged. The standoff for Fort Sumner continued until the Confederates attacked in April, triggering the Civil War. 1945, World War II, the 6th United States Army begins the invasion of Ligon Gulf in the Philippines. 1961, British authorities announced they have uncovered the Soviet Portland spy ring in London. 1991, representatives from the United States and Iraq meet at the Geneva Peace Conference to try and find a peaceful resolution to the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait. 2007, Apple CEO Steve Jobs introduces the original iPhone at the Macworld keynote in San Francisco. I'm a big fan of Steve Jobs. I know a lot of people really, oh, he didn't build anything. He just had ideas and other people did it for him. Yeah, okay. So did Thomas Edison. So did Henry Ford. One talent Steve Jobs had was knowing what people want and how to market it. Premiered on January 9th, 2011, Shameless. This is one of my favorite television shows of all time. It was on Showtime and it had its finale in 2021. But it was a series about a really dysfunctional family living on the south side of Chicago. It starred William H. Macy and Emmy Rossum. Joan Cusack was in it for a while too, which she was actually nominated for an Emmy Award in 2011 for her guest starring role. Side note, if you're going to watch this uh, and you shock easy, you might not want to watch it. It's a little weird. Don't watch it with your kids. Born on January 9th, 1982, Kate Middleton. Officially known as Catherine, Princess of Wales, and the Duchess of Cornwall. She married Prince William, Duke of Cambridge, in April of 2011, after dating him for nine years. She is the daughter-in-law of the late Princess Diana. Died on January 9th, 2022, Bob Saget. The great Bob Saget. Best known early in his career for his role as Danny Tanner on Full House. He also is known as being the original host of America's Funniest Home Videos. He provides the voice for Ted Mosby on How I Met Your Mother. In 2016, he reprised his role as Danny Tanner on the Netflix follow-up series to Full House called Fuller House. So on his birthday, I may have told you guys this, I may have discussed it with you. I know I've talked about it recently, but I was stand-up comedian before I moved to Oregon and a lot of my comedian friends had met and sort of knew Bob Saget. And when they were all coming up and he was a big name, see him at a comedy club, every single one of them on Facebook, the day he died, talked about what a kind person he was and what a decent guy. They call it the green room where you wait to go on stage. He would be in there. He'd be talking to you like he wasn't a star, anything like that. He'd watch your act and then tell you, hey, you ought to try and word it this way next time. See how that works. You know, things like that. He was a decent, decent guy. And it kind of broke everyone's heart when he passed away. So he died while he was at the Ritz Carlton Orlando. He had done a comedy show, went to his hotel room and then died in his sleep. The autopsy showed that he had blunt trauma to the back of his head, which they figure he had slipped or something in the shower, hit his head, thought he was okay, probably had a bump and went to bed and had a hemorrhage, never woke up. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day and be nice to each other.